Now, what is the ruling on those who do not pray? I don't know if we're going to talk to this to talk about this later on, but if you look at the verses of the Quran, such as that in Surah Al Tawbah or in Surah Al Mudathir or elsewhere, and combine to it the different narrations of the prophetic, prophetic sunnah of the Prophet you will find that we have a theoretical and a practical ruling. So the theoretical ruling is anyone who does not pray is a kafir. And this is established through the Quran as well as the sunnah. The theoretical ruling means that I do not implement it on an individual. What does that mean? I do not come to a person and I say, uh, do you pray? He says, no, I don't pray. So I say, okay, one plus one equals two. A person who doesn't pray is a kafir and this individual does not pray. Is, uh, uh, this individual does not pray, then this equals he is a kafir. And this is totally wrong. Because in order to implement this practically, there are conditions to be fulfilled and there are obstacles to be eliminated. Without implementing this, we cannot say that an individual is a kafir. And this is why a lot of the sisters come to me and say, Sheikh, my husband abuses me, he batters me, he insults me, he doesn't provide for me. And I say, yani, you have to weigh the consequences, weigh the pros and cons, because I don't want you to become um, angry or regretful after asking divorce. You have to be patient. I'll give him da'wah. So she, because she wants out of the marriage, she says, and he doesn't pray. So when I hear this and say, oh, what do you mean by he doesn't pray? He doesn't pray at all. She wants me to conclude that, oh, if he doesn't pray, then he's a kafir, then your marriage is void by default. People come to me and say, my father, he doesn't pray, not a single prayer, and I follow the opinion that whoever does not pray is a kafir. So he died. What should I do with the wealth he left? Because I will not in inherit him. All of this is wrong. The default that that individual is a Muslim. He claims to be a Muslim. He says he's a Muslim. All those around him acknowledge that he's a Muslim. The problem is, if you want to get him out of the fold of Islam, this is not for you and me. You have to fulfill the conditions that he's willing, that he's knowledgeable, that he's not misinterpreting, that he's not confused of the ruling, because that is not forced, for example, all of these conditions and obstacles must be eliminated and fulfilled at the same time for the conditions and eliminated for the obstacles. And this is usually done by a panel of judges who would sit with the individual and say, Akhi, you don't pray. Say, yeah, yeah, I don't pray. I believe it's mandatory, but I don't pray. No, you have to pray because this is mandatory. Allah obliged you to pray blah 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 he says i understand but i'm not gonna pray uh, now you're talking to a panel of judges they say put him in jail for three days so every day come and pray he said no i believe in the obligation of prayer but i don't want to pray for three days he's given a chance to show remorse and pray yet he's arrogant and he is insisting not to pray. Scholars say such an individual is not a Muslim anymore and he is to be executed and his execution is not uh, a prescribed punishment. Rather, it is for his apostasy and he's treated as an apost an apostate and he does not 
uh, uh, receive the funeral rites of a Muslim. He's not washed, shrouded, um, buried in a Muslim cemetery at all. So this is something that we have to acknowledge and understand before um, going into what, as they say, shooting from the hip. Anyone that doesn't pray, we just simply say, Khalas, he's a kafir, and we take him out of the millah of Islam.